1,000 Word Philosophy presents Descartes' I Think, Therefore I Am, written by Charles Michelli. If you are reading this, then you are probably looking at a screen or a piece of paper. Think to yourself, I have some paper in my hand. I am in front of a computer, or whatever fits. Is your belief here certain? Is there any way that you could believe this, yet your belief be false? Is there any possibility that you are mistaken about this belief? René Descartes, 1596-1650, argues that you could. This belief, and almost all other beliefs, are not certain. Descartes argues there is one clear exception, however. I think, therefore, I am. He claims to have discovered a belief that is certain and irrefutable. Perhaps there is no saying more famous in philosophy than this phrase, often known as the cogito, after its Latin phrasing, cogito ergo sum. This essay explores the meaning of the cogito, its importance to Descartes, and its legacy for philosophy up to the present day. Part 1. Doubt and Skepticism. The phrase, I think therefore I am, first appears in Discourse on Method, 1637. But Descartes changes the wording to I am, I exist, in his most famous 1641 work, Meditations on First Philosophy, called the Meditations for short. In the Meditations, Descartes reflects on the fact that he has had many false beliefs, and he sets out to address that problem with the hope of finding a way to ensure he only has true beliefs, and even that scientific research yields only truth as well. His strategy is to doubt or not believe any claim that is false or could be false. He recognizes that his senses might be deceiving him now, since they have deceived him before. He might also be reasoning erroneously now, since he has reasoned badly before. He thereby doubts all beliefs from his senses and from his faculty of reasoning, since those beliefs could be false. Descartes then considers the most extreme reason for doubt. There may exist an evil demon, sometimes translated genius, genie, or spirit, who has the power to control all of his thoughts, tricking him into believing anything. Descartes cannot prove that this demon does not exist, so he acknowledges that it's possible that all his beliefs about the world external to his own mind are illusions caused by the demon, corresponding to nothing at all, and so all his beliefs about the external world are false. Descartes is usually thought of as considering skepticism, the view that we lack knowledge or justified belief. Here skepticism is considered because we lack certainty. What we believe might be false, so our beliefs aren't knowledge. As we will see, Descartes argues the cogito enables him to defeat skepticism and show that we have knowledge with certainty. Part 2. The Cogito and Certainty after considering the evil demon, Descartes soon discovers the cogito. He realizes that thinking, I am, I exist, withstands the evil demon test. Even if all the beliefs and types of beliefs that Descartes reviews are false, or could be false, at the least he must exist to be deceived. Even if one doubts one's own existence, one must exist at that moment, since there must be something or someone doing the doubting. Doubting is a way of thinking, and one's existence is required to doubt or think in the first place. It is impossible to doubt, and yet not exist. So the I think element in the cogito implies the direct, immediate, certain knowledge of one's own existence. Thought requires a thinker, and is thus known with certainty, since not even the demon could deceive someone who doesn't exist. Descartes thereby found what he was looking for some certain, indubitable, irrefutable knowledge. Part 3. Defeating Skepticism Once the cogito is discovered, Descartes argues that it can serve as a foundation for how to find other truths that are certain. Descartes proposes that the cogito is undeniably true because it is clear and distinct. About clarity, Descartes explains, Some perceptions are so transparent and at the same time so simple, we can never think without believing them to be true. When something is distinct, the mind has an unclouded vision of what is most essential about that object. 
these qualities become the standard against which all other beliefs can be evaluated. Descartes argues that the clarity and distinctness rule derived from the cogito can justify our beliefs about the external world. But what verifies the clarity and distinctness rule? God's existence, Descartes argues. By reflecting on his idea of God, he argues that God exists. Descartes then argues that a truthful, good God would not allow us to be deceived when we understand objects clearly and distinctly. And so God would not allow us to routinely have false beliefs. The cogito then serves as the foundation for a series of claims that build upon each other. According to Descartes, his reasoning establishes that what he originally doubted, he actually knows with certainty. He thereby defeats the skeptical concerns that he considered earlier. Part 4. Conclusion. Knowledge without certainty. Descartes was impressed by the cogito because he had found a belief that is so certain, and so, when believed, cannot be false. He thought that certainty was necessary for a belief to be known. While he argued that, fortunately, we can ultimately be certain of much of what we think we know, most philosophers following him have denied that. Contemporary theorists of knowledge tend to deny that knowledge requires certainty. They tend to be fallibilists, arguing that we can know some claim, yet not be certain that it is true. The problem with Descartes' standard of knowledge is that almost no belief meets it. Descartes thought he could show how our ordinary knowledge claims are ultimately based on the cogito, but most philosophers have not been convinced by his case. The epistemic lesson of the cogito is that if certainty is a necessary requirement for knowledge, we are left with very little knowledge indeed. The challenge, however, is that if certainty is not required for knowledge, what is? That was Descartes' I Think, Therefore I Am, written by Charles Michelli, and read for you by Garrett Merriam.